Hi, welcome to another Retronaut video. So this video is about the Spectrum Next, which is uh, gloriously displayed to you here in a, in a brown cardboard box. This uh, particular uh, product um, is something that I've waited an absolute age to get my hands on. Still not actually got my hands on it yet. So what we're gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna unbox this uh, computer and have a look at it and see what I've received. I'll give you a little bit of background on it. In the UK, uh, many people of around my age, they started their microcomputing experience with a ZX Spectrum. So the ZX Spectrum was a low cost computer released in, I think it was 1982. And it was a, the successor to the ZX80 and the ZX81. And these computers were produced uh, by a company called Sinclair Research, which was headed by a person who became quite famous at the time called Clive Sinclair. The ZX80 and the 81, they, they had their issues though. They were so basic that they, they had very little RAM and they, you couldn't really do much with them really. They were, they were kind of almost useless as computers. But you know, Sir Clive had his heart in the right place and what he wanted to do was, was get a machine out there into people's hands uh, to everybody. He wanted to you know, democratize computing in the same way as Jack Tramiel did with the uh, Commodore 64, as he said, uh, Jack, that is, um, computers for the masses and not for the classes. In 1982, the Spectrum came out, the ZX Spectrum, and it actually hit a sweet spot because it had 16K of RAM and it had pretty decent graphics. The sound was very basic, um, but it had a really good processor, a Zilog Z80. It could also be expanded to 48K. So the ZX Spectrum went on in the UK, at least, to become a massive hit. And I believe it was also a big hit in uh, Russia and also in Brazil. So in, in countries where the price of the computing uh, experience was very uh, important, the ZX Spectrum had a really massive niche. And I think in Russia, it was actually pirated. They uh, cloned the machine. So unfortunately, none of the money from that actually made its way to uh, Clive Sinclair. So that was unfortunate, but there you go. So the Spectrum Next, uh, this was a new project uh, that came around in 2017. It was funded on Kickstarter. I wasn't actually aware of it at the time uh, because I wasn't actually into retro computing, but it was actually an FPGA based uh, machine, which meant it's a form of emulation, but done in hardware. So you get an exact replication of the original uh, machine's experience. But the Spectrum Next wasn't a, a clone of the original Spectrum. It had a new case design with a, obviously a higher quality keyboard because one of the features of the original Spectrum, the ZX Spectrum, was it had a rubber keyboard, which was, to be fair, pretty awful. You know, a lot of Spectrum users loved it, but it really wasn't very good, really. Um, but that was just done for cost, so it was, you know, it was done for the right reason. But in, this, in the Spectrum Next, you were going to have a, a high quality keyboard and a new case, which was actually followed the design language of some of the later uh, iterations of the ZX Spectrum. So that was pretty cool. And it would also work on a HDMI uh, TV, which would make obviously using it a lot easier because obviously if you want to get an original Spectrum, they only actually connect using RF as far as I'm aware. And that obviously makes it much more difficult to use uh, an original ZX Spectrum these days. So yeah, it was a pretty cool project. I didn't really know about it, as I said. Uh, the next side of it was that it had an enhanced mode where you could actually um, have a faster CPU, uh, more colors, better sound, and so on. So the idea was, was that it would actually emulate the original Spectrum perfectly, but at the same time would allow you to have a sort of a future iteration of the Spectrum that never actually happened. So I thought, you know, that's, that's a pretty cool project. But as I said, I wasn't aware of it at the time. My friend Wilson, who actually produced the uh, title music for this channel. We were chatting about it and he was into uh, the Spectrum at the time, the original one. And um, he said he'd become aware of this project. And uh, it turned out in August 11th, 2020, another issue of the Spectrum Next was coming around. So it would be possible for us both to actually get one of these machines. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And I thought, you know, it'd be a good way to get a Spectrum experience, you know, modern package and so on. So I thought, you know, it'd be a good idea to back it. The Spectrum Next Issue 2, uh, it achieved its funding uh, pretty soon after it went out and it did really well. It actually achieved all of its stretch goals as well. And it was fully funded by September in 2020. So just a couple of months after 
it was announced it was already fully funded to the tune of, well, actually it exceeded its funding goals. Uh, it eventually raised uh, 1.8 million pounds. It had 5,236 backers. So yeah, quite a lot of people actually wanted this machine and I was in that number. Now, at the time it was estimated that it would be delivered in August of 2021. Uh, basically one year later. However, you know, this was during the COVID pandemic. The, you know, the project had to basically put on, be put on hold for a while whilst, you know, COVID took its course. Obviously, you couldn't work very effectively at that time. And then as the clouds started to clear and the, uh, the pandemic started to end, there was a lot of optimism at that time that they could then go ahead and deliver the project very quickly. But unfortunately, because of the impact of COVID on China, the ability to get them was very difficult and the cost was very high. And this machine was based around an FPGA chip, which is not a cheap, a cheap chip. Um, that's quite hard to say. Uh, not a cheap chip at the best of times. But at this point, uh, just after the COVID uh, pandemic, it was absolutely extortionate. Uh, you were talking about, you know, prices of like 400%. Um, and they couldn't afford to do that. They only had the 1.8 million. They couldn't actually use that money to buy these extremely overpriced chips. It would have just basically obviously bankrupted the project. So they had to buy their time. And I think eventually they actually decided to change uh, FPGA chips because there were some others coming available that were, uh, well, they were becoming available and they were actually affordable. So yeah, it entered a long hiatus as they tried to work that all out. And basically it took until 2023 before the machines were actually ready to be delivered. Um, they then had to be manufactured and we all had to be patient and keep on waiting. But basically I think it was on the... 18th of December, my Spectrum Next actually arrived. Um, so that was obviously a very happy day because it was over three years, um, you know, waiting for this machine to arrive. Obviously, it was kind of crazy that when we funded this, we expected to have the machine one year later, but obviously it took all that time. But that's just the way it was. Nobody could do anything about the pandemic, obviously, and it was just one of those things that we all had to ride out and hope, you know, that we all came out the other side feeling okay. So why haven't I opened this machine? Well, it was running up to Christmas and things were very busy. And I was thinking, do I want to open this machine on Christmas day? But I actually traveled from my home and went to see my family in another part of the country. And I didn't really want to lug this with me and, uh, you know, whip this out on Christmas day and open it. So I thought, well, I'll wait until after Christmas and then I'll uh, open up the box when I get back and uh, enjoy it in that time. But funnily enough, uh, COVID actually came to strike once again because on Christmas Eve, I started to feel um, the effects of a cold. I actually went to my, see my family. Uh, luckily, none of those actually caught that cold off me. It was still very early on. I was starting to get a little bit of a sore throat, and, um, but not much really. And then on Christmas Day, I felt a little bit throaty as well. Um, but again, not much at all really. And um, I got back up here and by the day after Boxing Day, Boxing Day is the 26th of December in the UK. Um, so by the 27th, I was starting to feel pretty bad. That's why it made me think that I think it was COVID. It was either a flu or it was COVID. Um, but based on the symptoms as they developed, I've, I think it was actually COVID. One of the big symptoms of it was that it took a long time to actually uh, completely recover from it. Uh, it took weeks. Um, and I'm still actually feeling a little bit throaty still. And this is towards the end of January in 2024. So yeah, that gives you an idea of how long uh, it took to recover from it. So basically other things interjected in that time. The machine stayed in its box, <laughs> which was obviously quite frustrating. Um, but now I've actually got the time to um, have a look at the machine. Um, so yeah, let's uh, open up this box and uh, see what we can see inside. Okay, let's um, get the machine out of its box. Uh, unfortunately, when it arrived, there was a bit of a dent. Uh, it's kind of typical of couriers, isn't it, that they will actually damage it. Um, I might keep this box so I can actually store it in here when I'm not using it, and I'll keep it nice and safe. Um, so it's a pity that this got damaged. You can see that it's actually got quite a nice uh, Spectrum-themed uh, notice here. Not to open the box with a knife, although, I mean, it's actually very well packed, so I don't really know why they did that. Anyway, it's quite funny. Um, the dent actually went through into this flap here, but luckily there's a piece of cardboard um, in the top of here. So um, it's actually quite well protected. Let's open that out. Take this out, this cardboard. There we are. Put that to the down and here to the side. There's the machine. Just turn that around so you can see it. 
and uh, let's take it out. Uh, it's going to be probably quite awkward. It's not so bad actually. There we are. As I said, I'll keep this packaging because it's quite nice to be able to package the entire machine safely. Uh, and I got to say, I think the packaging on this looks great. There we are. We'll put this box out of the way, don't you? Okay, so the Spectrum Next personal computer. Um, the box, the packaging looks really wonderful, actually. Um, I did a, a short on this uh, just after Christmas about, or was it just before, um, about uh, receiving this machine. And, you know, my first impression at that time was it was a really great looking machine. Um, let me show that to you. Um, yeah, I think, you know, the box looks fantastic. It says on the back, let's show you this here. Right then, let me read out what it says. Uh, the ZX Spectrum Next is the evolution of the original Sinclair 8-bit computer that kick-started a generation of bedroom programmers whose games help shape the way we play to this day. Very much true. I was actually a Commodore 64 person, but I did have a friend who had one of these and I was a big fan of this machine as well. So I agree that it actually was a very important machine in the evolution of um, coding in the UK especially. Um, there were many, many people who couldn't afford to get a Commodore 64. It was about £200 and the ZX Spectrum was 125 It may not sound like that much these days, but believe me, salaries in those days were much lower than now. And that was a lot of money uh, for working class families especially. So the Spectrum was a very, very important machine in the UK in terms of uh, democratising coding, definitely. Um, so what else does it say? It says it's fully compatible with the Z ZX Spectrum, including its younger siblings, such as the 128, plus two and plus three. I actually own a plus Spectrum Plus, I think. So at some point we'll be showing that on the channel. Um, and it says here that it can even load tapes. <laughs> so um, I don't actually have a tape recorder. Um, I may get one in the future, but I'm not desperate to get one because these days you can use a mobile phone to basically take the place of a tape recorder. And then you can obviously plug that into here and then you can load the tapes, the audio files basically, directly from the mobile phone, and this machine will load it. It says, built from scratch with dedicated hardware, the ZX Spectrum Next boasts added features that make playing the original games a breeze and opens the door for brand new titles taking advantage of its improvements, such as better audio, more colors, larger memory, and faster processor. So that's the next element of the Spectrum Next, which is really cool. Says you can hook it up to a modern TV or monitor and get it start and get started rediscovering what computing was really about, which is cool. And then uh, this side of the uh, box has got uh, the hardware specifications. It says it's an eight-bit personal computer compatible with the original ZX Spectrum, so that's emulated. You know, using the FPGA. It says the processor is an enhanced FPGA-based Z80 CPU, running at 3.5 megahertz, with additional turbo modes all the way up to 28 megahertz. So obviously that's nearly 10 times faster when you're running in 28 megahertz mode. Still not incredibly fast, obviously. That's not, you know, probably on a par with like um, something like a Pentium or something like that from the 90s, but it's still a very fast machine. Uh, the memory is, it's got 2048K of RAM on board. And it says of that 1792K is available uh, to the software to use. The operating system is Next OS. Um, also compatible with ESX, DOS, and clones with full CPM plus support. Now, obviously, the original Spectrum didn't have uh, this OS. It would have had basically um, direct access to BASIC, Microsoft BASIC, I think it was. Um, so if you turned on the original Spectrum, you just got a cursor flashing waiting for you to type in your basic commands or waiting for you to type load and then pressing play on a tape to load up software. So it's going to be a bit of a different experience on here. Graphics, 640 by 256 pixel layered color display, capable of 512 colors with hardware accelerated tile map, scrolling and sprites, also supports Timex Sinclair screen modes. The Timex Sinclair was a variation of the uh, original Spectrum, which was sold in the United States. Over there, uh, Sinclair obviously uh, teamed up with uh, Timex to produce uh, a machine. So it was branded using the you know, partially using the Timex uh, brand in America, I suppose to give it more weight over there where Timex was more well known. Video output, it says digital HDMI compatible with audio and combined with VGA and RG RGB. 
Storage is a div MMC compatible SD card. So SD cards, really cool. Easy to swap out your storage. Audio, turbo sound next. And it says with digital audio and support for optional internal speaker. Because the original uh, Spectrum had an internal speaker, which gave it a very um, distinct sound. Um, slightly muffled, I suppose, inside the uh, case, a bit like a PC. Um, but people did quite decent things with that little speaker and it, it gave the machine a certain charm, I think. So looks like you can actually add an internal speaker to this machine, uh, which is interesting. Joysticks, two DB9 ports compatible with Cursor, Kempston and Sinclair ZX interface standards. Kempston was the big one back in the day. The Spectrum didn't come with any joystick ports actually by default. You had to plug a cartridge in the back, I think, to get those. Um, and I think the one that became the standard was Kempston. Tape support. Combined year and microphone port for tape loading and saving. Really cool, if you want to do that. Um, expansion, hybrid expansion port compatible with most ZX Spectrum peripherals, which is really cool. So you can actually plug in original hardware. That's really interesting. Coprocessor, so you can have a coprocessor, which is a Raspberry Pi Zero for functionality enhancements in accelerated mode only. So not in the original uh, Spectrum mode. So that's when you're running in, I suppose, next mode. You can actually add more uh, processing oomph to the machine if you wish to. Networking comes with a Wi-Fi module, an absolute fantasy back in those days. There was no such thing as network networking on a Spectrum as far as I remember. Extras, it has a real-time clock. Again, something that you wouldn't have had on the machine. And then on the back here, you have a number of games. And I must admit, I do not think these are the original games. I think these are enhanced versions for the next. Um, they, have, they seem to have many more colors and um, I think the pixel resolution looks similar, but they are much more colorful than, than the original Spectrum um, graphics. So um, interestingly, there's actually a text adventure called Wonderland. I'm quite a big fan of text adventures. So that'll be interesting to try that out and see what that's like. There's Head Over Heels, which I was a big fan of. Um, one of the things on the Spectrum that it was really good at was uh, isometric games, where you had an isometric view. Um, I was a big fan of those games. There was, uh, I think it was Night Law, Alien 8, Head over heels. Um, there were quite a few. And um, they, they weren't really very good on the Commodore 64 because of the pixel aspect ratio it just didn't really work very well. Um, so that was a kind of like a niche um, on the spectrum of games that I was kind of like jealous of, really. So, yeah, that's the, uh, the spectrum next. Um, it's got the, what's really nice as well is they've actually got some of the accents um, of the spectrum uh, color bands there. And it has a keyboard that is actually very much reminiscent of uh, the, the Spectrum I already own, actually. I think it's the Spectrum Plus. Um, and they've kept the Sinclair name, which is really cool. Unfortunately, uh, Sir Clive passed on. He became a Sir eventually. He was knighted for his efforts for helping people with technology. And unfortunately, he passed away um, just a couple of years ago. Um, so it's really nice that they've managed to keep his name alive on this machine. You know, they've managed to keep the branding and the the Sinclair um, research uh, name alive. So, enough waffle, let's open this up. Uh, I am gonna use a knife, <laughs> very naughty, but this is actually, you know, not very uh, nasty. I'm just gonna basically break the plastic here uh, so I can get into it. There we are. Just peel that off. I'm hoping in this video to actually have a quick uh, try on this machine, actually start it up. Um, well, we'll just put this down here, the plastic. Oh, how fancy. They've actually done, um, I forget what the name is, where you print uh, different material uh, finishes. So this is actually glossy and this is satin finish, which is very nice. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I'll try to move it around so you can see some reflections. Um, really, really nice touch that. Um, okay, so let's lift off the lid. Obviously the usual suction, a bit like an Apple unboxing experience actually. They always tend to be very tightly packed. There we go, off it comes. Ah, so what do we have here? The machine itself. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. It's actually, they've kept the form factor of the original keyboard. Um, I wanted to show you that. They've kept the original form factor, but you've got really nice travel in the keys now. Um, so that's a really good recreation of, this wasn't the ZX Spectrum, this was the Spectrum Plus, um, but that's the sort of slightly higher end version of the Spectrum. The keyboard on that machine still wasn't that great, 
but this really feels really good. There's a little box here, which I'm assuming has bits of bobs in it. Um, let's get the machine out first, actually, before we do that. They've got a little notch here to allow me to get it out. Is that enough? Yep, just about. Ooh, ooh, and there's more underneath. Um, wow, well, that looks really cool. Um, that really looks nice. Um, and what I really like about it is it's got support on the back for, as it said, RGB and VGA. So you can use this with an original VGA monitor if you want to get that more authentic feel. Not sure if I'm going to do that here. Um, I could do, I suppose. Um, I do have VJ monitors, so we could try that out. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, CRT VJ monitors, so yeah, maybe it's not really worth it. Um, what can I see here? So, as I just said, the keyboard feels really nice. Some nice travel on that. Um, then on the back, um, we've got uh, VGA, RGB. Then you've got the uh, keyboard and mouse connector there. Um, not quite sure how that works, if it's keyboard or mouse. And I think it's a PS2 connector. Um, then you've got uh, digital video uh, debug. So I'm not sure what that's for, probably for your coders. And then you've got digital video. So that's HDMI as far as I know. Um, it doesn't say HDMI. It's possible that they've not paid the license fee to be able to use that brand name um, because I know it's very expensive. So but I believe that's normal HDMI. You've got a year microphone, um, and then you've got audio out. So obviously this one would be used when you want to plug in an audio tape. Uh, you'd have your tape deck, and then that would then obviously output sound, and you would then plug that into the earphone or the microphone. I guess it's dual purpose. Um, so yeah, that's cool that they kept that. Um, and then you've got above two USB. Unfortunately, they are, hmm. That's a bit problematic because they're actually misaligned. Um, I'm not sure they're going to be usable actually unless I take this apart because they look too low. Hmm, that's a really big problem. Those two USP there, they're actually too low for the ports. So I don't think I'll be able to plug anything into there. That's going to make it difficult to use, isn't it? And apart from that, you haven't got any other USB here. So it looks like if I want to use a mouse, I'm going to have to use a PS2 mouse here. Funnily enough, I actually got some PS2 mouse adapters today because I don't have any PS2 mice. Um, so uh, that's lucky. Um, I'm not sure I really need to use a mouse on this. We'll have to see when we turn it on. I'm assuming the user interface is based on uh, using cursor keys and so on. Um, so maybe that's actually not such a big issue. But yeah, quite disappointed by the fact that um, the those don't align on it. I'm not quite sure if the machine is flat, actually. No, it is, it is. I just thought there might be some curvature there. Hmm, not sure if there is some curvature. So it might be that the case um, is slightly curved and that's why these don't actually align correctly. Um, so yeah, that's a bit of a problem really, I think. Um, we've got a port here, which I assume is the expansion port, which is where I think in a real spectrum, uh, you would plug in your Kempston joystick interface and your memory pack and things like that. Um, underneath the machine, uh, oh, it's got legs. Oh, interesting. So you can get more um, of an angle. Let's have a look at what that's like. Okay, not sure if it's really worth it. Um, there's a very small raising of the machine. Um, so let's see. It's a slightly unusual layout, I think. Not really what we're used to. You've got like true video and in video buttons here. Let me show you that. See these buttons here? And then you've got your caps lock and um, graph button here. And there, I think they're slightly offsetting the keys over in this direction. So if you look at P, P is very far over to the right, um, which is not, and it's right next to the enter key. Now, normally you have like bra ang angle brackets and things like that, things that don't make any sense for this machine. So all I'm trying to say is it's a great keyboard, but it isn't a PC layout. Um, so you're probably going to have to get used to the layout to type on it. It's probably going to be finger typing. It's not going to be touch typing on this because it does have a physically different layout. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. Um, something I wasn't really anticipating, really. It's really nice that they've kept the original uh, basic commands on here. So one of the features of the original Spectrum, which personally I didn't like, um, but I suppose you get used to it, is that to actually type in basic uh, code, you don't actually type in the code. You 
uh, hold down an option key and then you type one of these keys and then it actually prints out uh, whatever's on it, you know, like for instance, there's a key here that says um, save or new or plot, draw, rem, run, rand, you know, whatever. Um, and there's a button here called symbol shift. So I'm assuming that's maybe the button. Um, I've got to say, I've got to say this, I didn't have a spectrum. So much of it is unfamiliar to me. And that's what's really cool about this machine that I can actually have the spectrum experience now with this, um, as I said, this much better form factor, which is really cool. I actually don't think these USB ports aligning at the back is going to be a major issue. I don't anticipate using them. Um, I would probably like to plug in a mouse and I don't have a mouse with a micro USB uh, connection anyway, but I do have a mouse with um, a PS2 connection. So um, I think that's going to be fine. I'm really happy the fact that it's got this VGA RGB connector here. That's really cool because I would like to use it maybe with a, an old fashioned screen at some point maybe when playing you know, Spectrum games, the original Spectrum. And I think it's really nice that they cut the audio um, because if you do want to have that authentic Spectrum ex experience and actually load up something from tape, you know, an audio file, then you can, which is really cool. I, I'm really impressed with the hardware. Oh, okay, there's a bit more over here. Um, we've got a button here called NMI. I have no idea what that means. Um, we've got a, an SD card slot here. So let me see if that, does that work? Can I pull it out? It feels like I can. Yeah, there we are. So it says system software on there. It's not spring loaded as far as I can see. I have to actually physically push that, you know, pull that out. It's not like a ch -ch kind of arrangement, which to be fair, if this is a pressure fit, um, those could probably break, you know, the spring mechanism. So maybe that's a good choice really. Uh, then it's got a button that says drive. I have no idea what that's for. And then you've got a reset button, which I'm assuming resets the computer. Um, so yeah, that looks really cool. Uh, let me put that there facing for you so you can have a look at that. I have no idea what's in this box. Oh, there's a book here, I think actually. That's what this is, some kind of manual. That's really cool. So I guess the box has got the power supply, right? Let's all look. Yeah. So it being a multi-market, you know, a multi-territory uh, computer, They've actually supplied you with all the different adapters here, which is really nice. Um, now, I actually, I'm in the UK, so I need the UK adapter. Um, so it looks like it's a bayonet fit. Um, yeah, so I don't know how this works. Uh, I suppose it clicks into place, actually. It's not bayonet fit. So look. Hmm. All right, it is. There's a slight twist. You have to twist it slightly, and then it pops out there. That locks it in place, which is a really nice design. Has the um, Sinclair ZX Spectrum Next branding on it, which is cool. Um, that's the nine volt um, DC connection, which is nice because it's pretty easy to replace if this ever were to become broken, I suppose. And what's nice as well is they've got an adapter on it. So it's actually got the power switch uh, here. Um, I suppose if you don't want to use it, you don't have to use it. I would like to use that, that's nice. So we'll plug that in and uh, I'll put this box out of the way. I feel, I feel a bit sorry really, such a nice box uh, for the power supply. Again, they've used this um, satin finish with a glossy finish on it. I think you can see that. Um, so yeah, that's really, really nice. Um, let's put that back in here, keep it safe. And then we have this, uh, ah, okay. Is this a book? Let me try and lift this out. It's, it's a bit awkward to get this out actually. I don't know why it's under a lip here. Uh, hmm. It's quite strange. Ooh, yeah, that's a very odd design. There's like a, and for some reason there's a bunch of white stuff in here, which is a pity. <laughs> well, let's blow that out. Okay, anyway, moaning about the box out the way. Um, what do we get here? Um, there's a quick start guide, which is great because I wouldn't have a clue. Um, and it's very dense. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, so I'll have to read this off camera and uh, see what it has to say. Oh, interesting. It says power port, do not plug a USB peripheral here. That's actually um, pointing out the USB ports at the back. Um, so maybe they're not actually general USB ports. Maybe they're used for something else. 
Um, so yeah, weird. One of them is actually a power supply thing. So very interesting. I'll have to read this. Um, yeah, see what this has to say. It says, quick start guide. Welcome to your brand new ZX Spectrum Next computer. And then it says, the quick start guide will help you with the initial setup and connection of your computer. Um, fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'll do that off camera because it's quite involved. There's a lot of text here. Um, I don't really want to bore you with me, you know, plugging in the computer and having no idea what I'm doing. Um, so I'll do that off camera. I'll get used to the computer, I think. And then we'll do another video when I can actually show you um, with some kind of confidence exactly what it's uh, doing. And again, they've got this um, glossy uh, areas printed as well on the satin finish. So that's really nice that they've kept that finish going. Um, then we've got the actual Spectrum Next user manual. And I've got to say, it's very um, uh, sci-fi. Um, hopefully you can see that ring bound because if you weren't around in the 80s, ring binding was, was a thing. Um, the Commodore 64 manual was definitely ring bound. And I think my Dragon 32 one was as well. And uh, it's part of the experience to have a ring bound manual that you can sort of flick through. And um, I'm looking through it here. It looks pretty cool, actually. It's about uh, programming. So it's not a lightweight uh, manual. And it's got lots of uh, tables here. Not quite sure what they are for. Um, I know this is a funny thing, but I always used to like the smell of the paper in certain manuals. Let me have a smell of this. <laughs> nice, interesting. Um, yeah, lots more of these tables, um, more, more diagrams there about different bits of bobs. Interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this manual, I'll tell you. It's very, very dense, and there's a huge amount of information here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to have time to actually go through all of this. So we're talking. 318 pages in this manual. Um, it's pretty thin paper, and uh, there's a lot of information on each page. It's very dense, and even with my glasses on, um, this is why I'm wearing my glasses for this, because I, I can't read uh, up close without it. The type size is very small. Um, it's very dense. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, oh, this is cool. Schematics of the actual board. That's really nice, isn't it? Um, so it's really nice that they've got those. So if you've got a problem, you might be able to fix it yourself, maybe. Um, obviously, you don't want to really get to that point with a brand new computer. Um, channels, streams, drivers, and windows, and so on. So yeah, obviously, in here, you're going to have a lot of stuff about um, the, the files, the drives, um, how to code in BASIC, how the different menus work. Uh, it says here, Chapter 19, Next, ZXOS, and Alternatives. Um, and yeah, now I'm looking at sort of like basic examples, things like that. So um, it looks really cool. That is amazing. They've done so much work in this manual, it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, I mean, a manual back in the day would have been generally this size, but the paper would have been thicker and the type would have been larger. So they've actually crammed in a huge amount of information into here. Um, so that's really impressive. Um, yeah, great. Um, like I said, I'm not going to probably have time to look at this really in any great depth. Um, unfortunately, with my day job and other things going on, obviously doing this channel, um, I don't really have that much spare time in my life, unfortunately. So it's going to be interesting um, if I get to get the full benefit of this manual because it's, it's amazing um, the amount of detail that they go into in here. Um, but I'll make an effort to have a read of it, some bedtime reading for a while, I think. Um, let's see if I can get that to pop back in. Um, I think they put this in maybe the wrong way around. I'm not sure. And oh, there we are. Fits in quite nicely. So yeah, I think the next step is um, to use this quick start guide, get it physically set up. Um, once I've done that, uh, I'm obviously going to have to go through this and see how it works, get used to it. And um, I'll come back with another video and we'll have a look at this machine actually working. And I'm really interested to see some of the new versions of some of the old games. I know there's, there's well, on the box it actually shows a few games that have been updated. Um, I've been told that uh, The Lords of Midnight, which is a big uh, game for me, I really like that, has been updated. So it'll be cool to see what that looks like. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's it for the unboxing, actually. Um, that's the machine. Um, does really look great. Um, the keyboard I'm very impressed with. It's really nice, you know, and that has kept the heritage of the machine. The design of the case is wonderful. 
again, has kept the heritage. It really does feel like um, part of the series. You know, when when the Spectrum, so basically Sinclair was eventually sold to Amstrad, which is another company in the UK. Amstrad make, um, they made a lot of audio equipment, you know, record players and things like that. And um, unfortunately, when they, when, when they were sold to Amstrad, they changed the design language quite drastically. Um, it became much more boxy. Um, it was about this big. Um, other people came into the spectrum around that time. And for them, those machines are normal. Um, but I never really liked them. I didn't like the design so much. Um, and I really like the original design language of the ZX Spectrum. I, even though it's got a terrible keyboard, I just like the design of it. It's very evocative of that era. And um, as I said, I have a, a Spectrum Plus, which I need to get around to trying out. Um, and I think this machine really, really captures that really well. Um, it's a fantastic uh, redesign. I wish I had somewhere to put this permanently, actually. It'd be really nice to have uh, a desk. Um, hopefully this year I can do something about that, fingers crossed. Um, I'd like to have this out permanently and available at any time so I can just go over to it and do some stuff on it, play some games, maybe write some code. Because um, I work as a software engineer these days, so uh, coding for me is, is a lot easier than when I was a kid. So yeah, that would be great. Um, oh, ah, missed a couple of things. Joystick ports. There's a couple of joystick ports on the front. Unfortunately, I don't have any joysticks, actually. That's something I need to get. Um, so yeah, I will have to have a look out for some joysticks um, with these connectors. These are the you know the traditional Atari-based connectors, which became basically a bit of a standard in the 1980s. Um, I'm not sure what the Kempston joystick interface was like, actually, um, as I never had one. Um, so yeah, I'll have to get a joystick, because I think some of these games are going to be you know joystick games, and uh, quite a lot of the games on the Spectrum actually weren't. So And you can use the arrow keys, I'm assuming, to, to play most games, I would imagine. So yeah, maybe not such a, a desperately needed thing. So yeah, that's the Spectrum Next. Um, three years in the waiting to get it. And uh, I must say, I think it's actually worth it. Um, they've done a fantastic job on this machine. I can't vouch for it yet in terms of how it works and how it plays um, and the features of it. But from what I understand, it's a fantastic uh, machine. So I'm really looking forward to doing that when I've got some time. Um, not sure if I'm gonna be able to do that straight away. And the reason why is, um, if you saw a, a recent video that we put out, it was about uh, the Fujitsu Ergo Pro X453. Well, that machine, um, after uh, renovating the case, um, unfortunately de uh, developed a bit of a fault. Um, so I want to actually get that video out to you as soon as I can, where we show how we repair that machine. Um, so I'm probably going to do that next, and then we'll come back to the Spectrum next. and. Uh, have a play around with it. Unfortunately, right now that the Fujitsu is actually taking up my dining room table. That's the only space I have really for doing sort of engineering and you know using scopes and soldering and all that. So I'd like to kind of free that back up so we've got some space again back in the house. So um, that's a bit of a priority, I think, and that's why I'm probably not going to look at um, the Spectrum Next immediately. So that's it for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please obviously uh, click the like button. And if you really uh, did enjoy it, then I would, I'd really be happy if you could um, hit the subscribe button so that you know about other videos that we produce in the future. Um, obviously, if you want to you know, hear about the, the next video in this series, then you're not going to hear about it unless you subscribe. And uh, if you're interested in the Fujitsu video about the, that Fujitsu PC, that's coming up pretty soon. So again, subscribing will help. If you like us and you click on the like button, it really helps because it gets uh, our videos out to other people. Um, so it'd be very much appreciated if you could do that. And uh, if you have any friends who are interested in you know, retro computing as well, please let them know about this video to help grow the channel. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, for now, I'll see you later. Ta-ra.